Until recently, you'd see rock, stone, and brick walls everywhere, except in my artwork. <laughs> so I decided to just take a pause in doing any paintings for a while and just take a look at how to paint rocks and um, brick walls, stone walls, and um, boulders on seascapes and things like that. And what I found is they're, they're not all that scary and they're not all that difficult if you make a plan on how to paint them. So the first thing we need to do is decide what colors we're going to use. And I'm going to be using the Daniel Smith Extra Fine Watercolor Paints. And this is a secondary set that contains uh, quinacridone burnt orange, undersea green, and carbazole violet. And at first I looked at these colors and I thought, I don't know, it's orange and purple and we don't tend to, you know, really like to see those together because orange and purple are complementary and if you mix them together, you get mud, <laughs> you get brown. But with these, the way these colors are mixed by Daniel Smith, they actually all mix and blend together just beautifully as you're going to see in the rocks and bricks that I'm going to show you how to paint today. So I'm glad you're here. Thanks for tuning in and just um, sit back, relax, and watch me paint. I'm using a number six round Zen brush by uh, Royal and Langenickel, and I am using my Daniel Smith paint. You want to dip your brush into your main color and then just take the tip and pick up just a dab of a different color. And that way, because these paints are, uh, kind of are granular and they separate on the paper, it, it's going to give your bricks a texture that you would actually see in a brick wall in real life. So I'm going to make a line of, line of bricks. I'm going to paint a brick wall. And we start with color, and we've already chosen our colors. The next thing we're going to do is choose the scale of our bricks. So the first one I'm using, it's about a half an inch. And I want to try to keep my bricks basically the same size, but not the same color. So I laid down my first one. I'm going to go into a little bit of green and just dab it in and let that granulate. Okay, so I'll go into my next color and I'm using a fair amount of water here. Pick up just a dab from a different color. I'm going to leave some white space between my bricks my second one is going to be the same size and same shape. Bricks are usually made in a mold, so they're going to be about the same size. Whereas if you're doing stone, you're going to have different sizes and different shapes. But um, bricks are a little bit different. So let's pick up another one. Just varying my color a little bit. Let's come over to this side. Be careful not to touch. Oop, just like I did <laughs> right there. And there we go. That will be okay. I'm going to pick up a little bit of paint from the top. You want to tend to make the bottom edge a little bit darker than your top edge. Alright, so this is going to be an old brick wall with some character to it. Some, there's some chips. Some of the bricks are chipped. Okay.
And let's do just a couple more and then we'll be ready to start on our second row. And let's finish this row with a little quarter of a brick on that side. When you start your second row, you're going to come in between two bricks and be mindful of the size. The tendency is to make them a little bit too large. Nothing is exact. Go back in again and just pick up a little bit of a highlight on the top. And there you go, you just um, continue on with it, however many rows that you would like. And um, very beautiful bricks. Okay, so the next thing we're going to work on are stone walls. And you they're basically made the same way, but um, stones are not all the same size and they're not all the same shape. So there's a little bit of a different technique with those. So let's get started with our stone.
And there's one, one final thing that I like to talk about on, on creating brick and stone walls in your paintings. If you have um, a wall that is long, you need to show some perspective. So I'm going to take my pencil and just sketch in where I would like my wall to be in my painting. And it's going to be thicker the closer it is to you and thinner the further it away it is from you. And I'm going to do this one with using stone. The stones that are closer to you are going to be larger and the stones that are farthest away will be smaller. So what I like to do with this is get a little perspective laid down before I start focusing on creating a lot of stones. So the ones that are closest are going to be largest. So I'm going to put in my first one. Okay, so that's going to be my largest stone. And then I want to drop in a little bit of texture for that. And then my for halfway down my wall, I want to make a stone in that area that is half the size of this one. And then at the end of my wall, that's going to be where the smallest stones are. So I'm going to make that one half the size again of this one. So that will give me a reference for how large or how small my stones need to be to show perspective and um, distance on this wall. Okay, I'm going to pick up a little bit of paint so that I don't have too much of a puddle there. And now we can just go back in and have fun with painting some stones. So we use the same, we're going to leave space between the stones and vary the size and shape of our stones. Okay, we need a little bit of texture. Okay, let that mix and mingle. We want to leave enough space between so that they are clearly separated, but not too much that it gives it a, um, an unnatural appearance. I like to keep the lines pretty straight on the bottom of the wall and the top of the wall. have some round shapes. I just wanted to knock back that purple just a little bit so that it's more of a an earthy tone. Not so bright. Okay, and we're gonna put a small
give that time to dry just a little bit. I've decided to use a watercolor pencil to add some shadows to the bottoms of our bricks and stone. So let's start up here where our bricks are completely dry. And I'm just going to go use the watercolor pencil on the bottom edge of some of these bricks to add some dimension. And some of them in the corners especially we can use I'm using a, um, a black sharpie permanent marker and just in the corner try not to just outline the whole brick where I'm being very selective about where I'm placing this black sharp edge. Okay, we'll come up here, do the same thing. And that also works well around the bottom edges of the rocks on a rock wall. You could do this with a watercolor brush and some dark purple or even Payne's gray. and a watercolor brush. I just find that it's easier sometimes to, um, because these are, we want a sharp edge here and not a soft edge. Sometimes I find it's just easier to use a marking pen or a watercolor pencil. My, um, my rock wall is not quite dry enough to do that yet, but you can get the, the idea. So there you have um, a quick lesson on creating brick walls, rock walls, stone walls. Have fun with it. Experiment with color, shape. Um, you can do a pile of rocks in the middle of a, a field. Um, but it's just one more element that once you can um, use it in your paintings. It'll make your paintings much more interesting. So thank you for joining me. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, we really appreciate the thumbs up and follows. It helps our page to be found a little more easily. And it's a great encouragement to me. So um, I thank you for those and I appreciate your support. Have a great day. Stay safe.